Hello there and welcome to the Pure Paper 2 from 2019. Here we're looking at question 11. So figure 8 shows a sketch of a curve C with the equation y equals x to the x, where x is greater than 0. Find, by firstly taking logarithms, the x-coordinate of the turning point C. So, um, quite a difficult question this one. We've got y equals x to the power of x. X is in both positions here. So this is going to be quite a difficult differential to work out. We need to differentiate it because obviously we want to work out a turning point. So, it says first by taking logarithms. So I think we'll do that. We'll take ln of both sides. And it's going to be ln of y on the left-hand side. And ln of x to the x on the right-hand side. Now we're going to use a rule of logarithms on the right hand side to bring this power to the front. So now it's just x times ln x and that's going to be a product rule style differentiation equals ln y. Now what we're going to do is we're going to implicitly differentiate um, on both sides with respect to x. So we are going to differentiate with respect to x on both sides. Now when you differentiate ln y with respect to x, it gives you 1 over y dy by dx. That's how you differentiate ln y with respect to x. And on the right hand side, to differentiate with respect to x, it's going to be the product rule. So it's going to be x times 1 over x add 1 times ln x. So if we sort out the right-hand side and times by y, it's going to be dy by dx equals um, x times 1 over x is 1 plus ln x. And then we'll multiply that by y up on the other side. And we know from originally that y is equal to x ln x. So dy by dx is going to equal 1 plus ln x. Uh, times x to the x. And there we are, that's the answer to this derivative. So first by taking them, find the x coordinate of the um, of the turning point. So we want 1 plus ln x to equal 0. So if we take the 1 onto the other side and um, get rid of the ln. How do you get rid of a ln? You e both sides. So it's going to be e to the minus 1. So there we are. This is the x coordinate of the turning point. This coordinate here is e to the minus 1. And why did I just set the bracket equal to 0? Because there's no um, value for x that will set this equal to 0. Because if you do 0 to the power of 0, that's a very difficult um indice to work out that has lots of different results depending upon how you work it out but this inside the bracket here should have a value that equals zero and it is e to the minus one so that's the answer to part a let's now move on to part b so figure eight shows that a sketch with curve c with y equals x to the x um, the point alpha two lies on c show that alpha is a value in between 1.5 to 1.6. OK, so we're looking to show that um, when we do f of alpha, we get um, 2. Um, so that's going to mean x to the x equals 2. So if we want to use the change of sign formula thing technique, we need to take away the 2 on the other side. So now what we're going to do is with is we'll call this function here, well, I've used the f already, so we'll call this function g. g of 1.5 is 1.5 to the power of 1.5 minus 2, and that gives us an answer of minus 0.16. And g of 1.6 will give us 1.6 to the power of 1.6 minus 2, and that gives us an answer of 0 0.12. And now we can use that change of sign formulae. So as um, f of x is continuous, um, between 1.5 to 1.6, and there is a change of sign,
there exists alpha in between 1.5 to 1.6 such that f of alpha equals 2. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here. Let's move on to the next part. So part C and part D, a possible iteration formula that could be used in an attempt to find alpha is xn plus 1 equals 2 times x to the n to the power of 1 minus x to the n. Using this formula with x1 equals 1.5, find x to the 4, x4 um, to three decimal places. So if x1 equals 1.5, this is this kind of question where you have to put 1.5 into your calculator and then use the formula, but instead of x, use answer button. So now this is going to input 1.5 in both places where xn is, um, and that will give us... 1.633 to three decimal places and then we just need to press equals again to get x3 so press equals again and we get x3 equals 1.466 uh, that's to three, three decimal places again and then just press equals again to get the next solution x4 is 1.673 so there we are that's the answer for x4 Part D is describe the long-term behavior of Xn. Now, what we'd be hoping here is that um, as we continue on our solutions, they will tend more and more towards the um, solution to this equation. Um, but if we do keep on just pressing the equals button, then it will go to 1. And if we press equals again, it will go to 2. If we press equals again, it will go to 1. And if we press equals again, it will go to 2. So, to describe the long-term behavior of xn, um, it oscillates from uh, xn equals 1 to xn equals 2. Okay, so that's just what happens when you continue to press the equals button. That's the long-term behavior of xn. So there we are, that's the answer for this question here. Question 11, worth 11 marks. Let's now move on to question 12. 